How are you guys doing? Today is Friday, May 27th, 2022. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to review yesterday's elite matchups and performances from Thursday, May 26th. And of course, I'm going to preview everything that's going on today. And before I do so, I'm going to take a quick step back and look at where we are in this calendar year. As we are towards the end of May, we are still in the NFL offseason as the NFL season will not resume, or at least the regular season doesn't start until September around my birthday. So we have a few months until then. I'm taking a look at what's going on in the ML in the NBA season. There are now three teams left in the NBA after the Dallas Mavericks were eliminated by the Golden State Warriors last night. One team is through to the NBA Finals round, while the two teams in the East are still fighting it out. In the NHL Stanley Cup, there are now two teams that have advanced to the second round, as there are six teams left competing for this year's title, as Edmonton is now in, just as well as the defending back-to-back Stanley Cup champs. Uh, Not to mention that we are in the second month of the MLB season. Looking outwards to see what's going on outside of the States, uh, we are entering the final weekend of Champions League as the Champions League final between Liverpool, the Premier League runners-up, and the La Liga champions Real Madrid is set for tomorrow. So of course, with that said, I'm going to start with what's going on in the NBA. Yesterday was Game 5 of the Western Conference Finals. Going in, the Warriors led this series 3-1 to as they won the first three series the first three games of the series and the Warriors had gone on to one win game four by 10 coming in the Warriors would go on to eliminate the Mavericks last night after beating them 120 to 110 they won by 10 points after they outscored the Mavericks by five in the first quarter and then by an additional 12 in the second they were up by 17 at the half on the losing end of this matchup, the 4 C Dallas Mavericks in their final game of the 2021-22 season were led in scoring by their elite starting shooting guard out of Slovenia, Luka Doncic. In his final game of yet another season in which he finished with on the first team All-NBA, Doncic would finish with 28 points, 9 rebounds, and 6 assists in 40 minutes. He shot 10 for 28 from the field, 3 for 13 from 3. He would go on to shoot 5 for 7 from the foul line. Uh, Their point guard off the bench, Spencer Dinwiddie, finished with 26 points in 32 minutes. He shot 7 for 12 from the field. 5 for 7 from 3, and he shot 7 for 9 from the free throw line. Their starting starting power forward, Dorian Finney-Smith, finished with 13 points and 2 steals in 39 minutes. Their starting point guard, Jalen Brunson, finished with 10 points in 30 minutes. On the winning end of this matchup, the three-seed Golden State Warriors were led in scoring by their elite starting shooting guard and former multiple-time champ, Klay Thompson. He finished with 32 points, two rebounds and three assists in 37 minutes. He shot 12 for 25 from the field and eight for 16 from three. Their all-star starting small forward, Andrew Wiggins, finished with 18 points and 10 rebounds in 40 minutes. He shot seven for 16 from the field and made all four of his free throws. Their all-star starting power forward, Draymond Green, finished with 17 points, six rebounds and nine assists as he had five fouls in 31 minutes. He shot six for seven from the field. He made his only three-point attempt of the night, and he made all four of his free throws. Their shooting guard off the bench, Jordan Poole, finished with 16 points, six rebounds, six assists, and two steals in 28 minutes. Their goaded starting point guard out of Davidson, Stephen Curry, finished with 15 points, three rebounds, nine assists, and two steals in 35 minutes. He shot five for 17 from the field, two for seven from three, and he shot all, and he made all three of his free throws. Uh, their starting center, Kavon Looney, finished with 10 points and 18 rebounds in 31 minutes. He shot five for eight from the field. With this win, the three seed Golden State Warriors out of the Western Conference are the team that represents the West in the NBA Finals. They will face off against the winner between the Miami Heat and the Boston Celtics, as the Celtics currently lead that series three to two. So with three teams left in the NBA, or at least in the NBA playoffs, taking a look at what's going on today. Today should be game six of the Eastern Conference Finals as the two-seed Boston Celtics host the one-seed Miami Heat. Now that the Warriors have won, the winner of this series will face off against Golden State. If the Celtics win game six, 
outright they will be the team that advances if miami wins game six then it goes to game seven in miami as game seven in miami would be scheduled for sunday if it got there um but of course the celtics have home court advantage and with one more win they can go through right now that is the context for the nba playoffs taking a look at what's going on in the stanley cup playoffs going in there were seven teams left as the only team that had gotten through prior to yesterday um was the the Tampa Bay Lightning, the defending back-to-back champs who swept the Florida Panthers in this round. Um, the first matchup was the Metropolitan Divisional Final as the two seed her as the one seed Carolina Hurricanes went on to host the New York Rangers. Um, going into this matchup, the series was tied at two as so far through the first five games of this series, the home team has won. The Hurricanes won games one and two. The Rangers won games three and four. The Hurricanes are going to win game five, three to one, as New York tied them at one in the first period. The goal that put them ahead was from Tuvo Teravainen, Teravainen uh, off of a power play in the second period. And then their third goal come from Andrei Shveknikov um, to, of course, put them above and put them one win away from the Eastern Conference Finals. The top star of this game went to Carolina center Vincent Trocek as he had a goal on the day. He had their first shorthanded goal to put them ahead in the first period. The second star of the game went to Carolina's right winger, Andre Shvechnikov, whose third period goal would put the cherry on top. And the third star went to Brett Pesci, Carolina's defender, as he had an assist. With this win, the Carolina Panthers are up three to two. They have to win either game six or game seven if they want to advance to the Eastern Conference final to face off against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And with this loss, the Rangers are now trailing this series three to two. They have to win game six at home in Madison Square Garden tomorrow on ESPN. And they have to win game seven in Carolina if they want to get through and face off against the Lightning. But as of right now, they are facing elimination, but they have not been eliminated yet. Taking a look at the second game that took place yesterday, it was the final uh, matchup of the Pacific Divisional Round as the one seed Calgary Flames hosted the two seed Edmonton Oilers. Coming into this matchup, Edmonton led the series three to one. After the Flames won the first game, the Oilers would win game two in Calgary uh, by two. They would, in, they would play games three and four in Edmonton, where they would win game three uh, by. Three. They won it four to one. They would win game four by two goals. They were going to win game five in overtime, uh, five to four, as they would be the team out of the Pacific, out of the Canadian Pacific that will advance to the Western Conference final, um, as the game winning goal would be scored by Connor McDavid in overtime as neither team scored in the third period. The second period saw seven goals total as the uh, as of course this series ended up being one for the ages. I imagine one that Canadians are going to resonate with for a long time. Um but the star the, fir- the first star of the game went to Edmonton's left winger Zach Hyman as he had a goal and two assists. Um the second star of the game went to Edmonton center Connor McDavid who scored the game winning goal. And then of course the third star went to Calgary's center, Michael Backlund, as he would have a goal and an assist. Um, and with this win, the Edmonton, the Edmonton Oilers have won this series in five games. They are going to be the team that advances to the Western Conference final out of the Canadian Pacific, the only team out of the West in Canada remaining. They will face off against the winner between the Colorado Avalanche and the St. Louis Blues, the one and three seeds in the Central Division. As right now, Colorado leads that series three to two. Um, and with Edmonton advancing, they are now the second team to have made it to the conference final stage. Um, and considering they're going to be waiting, it is going to be quite um, some suspense building up as the Stanley Cup inches day by day. But as of right now, with this loss, the Calgary Flames, after having finished with a uh, 50, 21, and 11 record and having beaten the Dallas Stars in the wild card round, they see their 2021 22 season come to an end. Um, and now, with six teams left in the NHL, taking a look at what's going on today, today should be game six of the Central Divisional Final as the three seed St. Louis Blues host the one seed Colorado Avalanche. As the Blues were able to um, keep themselves alive in game five by winning off of an overtime goal. Um, 
They now host the Avalanche as the Blues have to win games game six and seven if they want to advance. Colorado has to win game six or game seven to get to the second round as the Blues very well could be eliminated today as the Avalanche and the Blues both are looking to face off against the Edmonton Oilers in the second round. So that is what's going on in the NHL. Taking a look at what's going on in the MLB, starting off with a surprise turn of events, uh, the Cincinnati Reds will go on to host the Chicago Cubs. The Reds, the teams that went in, the team that went in holding the worst record in the MLB, win percentage wise, would go on to beat the Cubs twenty to five after also putting up twenty runs. They would go on to score eight runs in the third inning, as they would of course just pour on the runs and then just not let it stop. On the losing end of this matchup, the Chicago Cubs will see the loss go to their starting pitcher. Um, their starting pitcher in this particular matchup, or I guess the loss for Chicago is given to Justin Steele. Steele would pick up loss number five of the season. He allowed seven earned runs off of seven hits and two innings pitched. He struck out two batters and walked two. With this loss, Steele is one and five. In the Cubs batting lineup, their center fielder in this matchup, Christopher Morrell, was the only Cub who had a multi-hit game as he went two for five with a run. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Cincinnati Reds would see the win go to their starting pitcher, Hunter Green, out of Los Angeles. He allowed five earned runs off of seven hits and five innings pitched. He struck out six batters and walked two. With his win, he's two and six. In the Reds batting lineup, their center fielder Nick Senzel would end up going four for four with an RBI and three runs. Uh, Their third baseman, Brandon Drury, ended up going two for six with three RBIs and a run. Their designated hitter, Tommy Pham, went two for four with three RBIs and two runs. Their catcher, Tyler Stevenson, ended up going three for five with two RBIs and three runs. Their shortstop, Kyle Farmer, would go four for four with five RBIs and three runs. He would go on to hit his second and third home runs of the season. Their left fielder, Albert Almora Jr., would end up going three for five with three RBIs and three runs. And with this win, the Cincinnati Reds are now 14 and 30. That is the worst record in the National League Central at this very moment. They are one of two teams still that have crossed the 30 loss threshold at this point. Um, And they are now holding on to the lowest um, winning percentage in the major leagues at this moment. They've now, they are currently sitting 14 and a half games behind the division leading Milwaukee Brewers as they've won their last two games and five of their last 10. With this loss, the Chicago Cubs are 18 and 26. That is the fourth best record in the National League Central. They are sitting 10 and a half games behind the division leading Milwaukee Brewers as the Cubs have lost their last two games against the Reds and they've lost six of their last 10. I think they've lost their last two against the Reds. Don't take my word for that. Exactly. Um, But taking a look at what happened in Tampa Bay, the Rays would host the New York Yankees as the Yankees came in holding the best record in baseball. The Yankees would go on to beat the Rays 7-2 as the first five innings were virtually scoreless. They would score seven runs in the they would score three runs in the sixth and ninth innings each before the Rays would even get a chance to score. Both teams would still go on to finish with six hits either way. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Tampa Bay Rays would see the loss go to their starting pitcher, Ryan Yarbrough. Yarbrough allowed three runs off of two hits in the 5.1 innings he pitched. He struck out five batters and walked one. Uh, he would go With his loss, he's now 0-1. In the Rays batting lineup, their first baseman, Harold Ramirez, went two for four with a run. Um, And then their center fielder, Manuel Margot, would end up going two for four with an RBI. On the winning end of this matchup, the New York Yankees would see the win go to their starting pitcher, Nestor Cortez. Cortez allowed one earned run off of four hits in the eight innings he pitched. He struck out five batters and walked one. With this win, Nestor Cortez is 4-1. and one. In the Yankees batting lineup, nobody on their team would finish with more than one hit. However, their elite center fielder, Aaron Judge, would finish with a couple of RBIs. With this win, the New York Yankees are now 32-13. and 13. That is the best record in the American League East, and that is the best record in the major leagues. They are the only team who's won at least 70% of their games so far far they sit five and a half games ahead of the second place tampa bay rays in their division and right now they are they have won their last three games and they've won six of their last 10 their three game winning streak is the longest active winning streak in the mlb right now as a matter of fact uh just to 
throw uh, just to throw that in there as well. Um, but of course, with this loss, the Tampa Bay Rays are 26 and 18. That is the second best record in the division. They sit five and a half games behind the division leading Yankees as they've lost four of their last 10 games. Taking a look at what happened in D.C., the Nationals hosted the Colorado Rockies. The Nats would beat the Rockies 7-3 after scoring four runs in the first inning. They would, of course, build up a lead that the Rockies wouldn't even match for the rest of the eight innings. On the losing end of this matchup, the Rockies would see the loss go to their starting pitcher, Herman Marquez. Marquez allowed five earned runs off of six hits and six innings pitched. He struck out two batters and walked three. With this loss, Marquez is 1-5. In, in the Rockies' batting lineup, their center fielder, Jonathan Daza, would end up going 2-for-3 with a run. Um, and then their catcher, Edwin Diaz, or Elias Diaz, apologize. Elias Diaz would go 2-for-4. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Washington Nationals, you see the win go to their starting pitcher, Patrick Corbin. Corbin allowed three earned runs off of seven hits in 6.1 innings pitched. He struck out three batters and walked two. With this win, Patrick Corbin is 1-7. In, in the Nats batting lineup, their second baseman, Cesar Hernandez, would end up going 2-4 for four with an RBI and two runs. Their shortstop, D. Strange Gordon, would go 2-4 for four with a run. With this win, the Washington Nationals are now 16-30. That is the worst record in the National League East as they've now won their last two games. They've won four of their last 10. They now sit 13 games behind the division-leading New York Mets at this moment. With this loss, the Colorado Rockies are 20-24. and That is the worst record in the National League West. They are sitting 10 games behind the division-leading Los Angeles Dodgers as they've lost their last two games and they've lost seven of their last 10. Taking a look at what happened in Detroit, the Tigers host the Cleveland Guardians. Detroit would end up beating Cleveland 4-3 to as Detroit would have to win off of a walk-off. After Detroit scored the first two runs of the game, the Guardians would tie it up in the third inning off three off of a, off of two scoring plays. In the bottom of the ninth, it would be an RBI single from Detroit's future Hall of Famer Miguel Cabrera to give them their 16th win of the year. On the losing end of this matchup, the Cleveland Guardians would see the start go to Connor Pilkington. Pilkington allowed three earned runs off of seven hits and 3.1 innings pitched. He struck out four batters and walked four. The loss would go to Cleveland's closer Trevor Stefan. Stefan allowed one earned run off of two hits he, he allowed or he would get one out he would not make it through the ninth inning um, as he, his only out was a strikeout with his loss he's now two and two in the guardians batting lineup their right fielder oscar gonzalez went two for four so he was the only player on the team who had more than one hit on the winning end of this matchup the hometown detroit tigers would see the start go to Tarek skubal skubal allowed three earned runs off of five hits and in seven innings pitched he struck out five batters and walked one the, say, the win would go to the Tigers' closer, Gregory Soto. Soto allowed no earned runs and only one hit in the ninth inning, and he would go on to strike out a batter as well. With this win, Gregory Soto is 2-2. Two and two. Their left fielder, Robbie Grossman, would end up going 2-4 for four with two runs. Their future Hall of Fame designated hitter, Miguel Cabrera, went 3-4 for four with two RBIs. With this win, the Detroit Tigers are now 16-28. and 28. That is the fourth best record in the American League Central as they've won their last two games and they've won five of their last 10. They are sitting 10 and a half games behind the division leading Minnesota Twins. With this loss, the Guardians are 18 and 23. That is the third best record in the American League Central as they sit seven games behind the division leading Minnesota Twins. They've lost their last three games. Their three game losing streak is actually the longest active losing streak in the MLB right now. They've lost seven of their last 10. Taking a look at what happened in Atlanta, the defending World Series champs, Atlanta Braves, hosted the Philadelphia Phillies as they're fighting out for the second best record in the division behind the Mets. The Phillies would beat the Braves 4-1 to one as the Braves scored their lone run in the, ninth, in the bottom of the ninth after the Phillies had already scored their four. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Braves saw the loss go to their starting pitcher, Kyle Wright. Wright allowed three earned runs off of three hits in 6.2 innings pitched. He struck out five batters and walked two. With his loss, Kyle Wright is four and three. Um, in their batting lineup, their first baseman, Matt Olson went two for three with a run. And on the winning end of this matchup, the Philadelphia Phillies saw the win go to their starting pitcher, Aaron Nola. Nola allowed one earned run off of five hits in 8.1 innings pitched. He would strike out 10 batters 
and he would walk none. With this win, he's now two and four. In the Phillies batting lineup, their only player with more than one hit was their center fielder, Odubel Herrera. He would go two for four with two RBIs. With this win, the Philadelphia Phillies and the Braves are now 21 and 24. They are both sitting seven and a half games behind the division leading New York Mets. The Braves have lost five of their last 10, while the Phillies have won four of their last 10. Taking a look at what happened in Minneapolis, the AL Central leading Minnesota Twins hosted the Kansas City Royals, and the Royals, holding the worst record in the division, were able to beat the Twins 3-2 to two off of a three-run eighth inning. Um, they would tie the game off of a two-run double from Whit Merrifield, and they would take the lead off of an RBI double from their rookie Bobby Witt Jr. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Minnesota Twins would see the start go to Devin Smelter. He would allow no earned runs off of two hits in the seven innings he pitched. He would strike out six batters and walk one. The loss would end up going to the Twins' first relief pitcher, Tyler Duffy. Duffy allowed three earned runs off of four hits in the inning that he pitched, which was the eighth. He would walk a batter. He would pick up his third blown save of the year. And with this loss, he's two and three. In the Twins batting lineup, their elite shortstop, Carlos Correa, went two for five. Their catcher, Gary Sanchez, went two for five as well. And then their second, or I guess their infielder, Jose Miranda, their first baseman, went two for four with a run. On the winning end of this matchup, the Kansas City Royals will see the start go to Daniel Lynch. Daniel Lynch allowed two earned runs off of seven hits in the 5.1 innings he pitched. He struck out six batters and walked two. The win would go to the Royals' second relief pitcher, Josh Stamon. He would allow no earned runs and no hits as he would pitch the entire seventh. He would strike out two batters and with this win, he's two and one. In the bullpen, their closer, Scott Barlow, would pick up the save. He would allow no earned runs and only two hits in the eighth and ninth innings as he would strike out two batters. He would pick up his fifth save of the year. In the Royals batting lineup, nobody on their team would finish with more than one hit. Their elite right fielder, Whit Merrifield, picked up a couple of RBIs for himself. With this win, the Kansas City Royals are now 15-28. and 28. That is the worst record in the American League Central, and at the moment, that is the worst record in the American League. Only the Washington Nationals and Cincinnati Reds have worse records than them in the MLB as a whole. They sit 11 games behind the division-leading Minnesota Twins as they've won three of their last 10. With this loss, the Minnesota Twins are 27-18. and 18. Uh, That is the best record in the American League Central, the third best record in the American League, as they sit four and a half games ahead of the defending AL Central champs, Chicago White Sox. They have now lost their last two games, and the Twins have only lost three of their last ten. Taking a look at what happened in St. Louis, the Cardinals hosted the NL Central leading Milwaukee Brewers, and the Brewers would show their might as they beat the Cardinals 4-3, just edging the Cardinals out by one run, but they had 12 hits in the ballgame. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown St. Louis Cardinals saw the loss go to their starting pitcher, Adam Wainwright, as the Cardinals never really got a chance to take the lead. Um, Wainwright would allow four runs off of 10 hits in five innings pitched. He struck out two batters and walked one. With this loss, Adam Wainwright is 5-4. and four. In the Cardinals batting lineup, their second baseman, Tommy Edmond, went 3-5 for five with a run. Their elite first baseman, Paul Goldschmidt, went 2-4 for four with an RBI and two runs. He did his eighth home run of the season. And on the winning end of this matchup, the Milwaukee Brewers saw the win go to their starting pitcher, Eric Lauer. Lauer allowed two earned runs off of four hits in five innings pitches. He struck out a batter and walked four. With this win, he's now 5-1. and one. The save would go to the Brewers' elite closer, Josh Hader. Hader allowed no earned runs off of one hit in the ninth inning as he struck out a batter and walked one. He picked up his 16th save of the year. Their elite left fielder, Christian Yelich, ended up going 2-for-4 with an RBI. Their designated hitter, Andrew McCutcheon, went 2-for-5 with an RBI and a run. Their catcher, Omar Narvaez, would end up going 2-for-4. With this win, the Milwaukee Brewers are now 29-16. and 16. That is the best record in the National League Central, as they now sit four and a half games ahead of the second-place St. Louis Cardinals. They have now won their last three games, and they've won seven of their last ten, um, as they are currently holding on to the second-best record in the National League, as only the Dodgers have a better record than them win percentage-wise at the moment. With this loss, the St. Louis Cardinals are 24-20. and 20. That is the second-best record in the NL Central. They sit four and a half games behind the division leading Milwaukee Brewers. The Cardinals have lost their last two games and they've lost five of their last 10. 
Um, but just to also go back to the Brewers, their three-game winning streak is the longest active winning streak in the major leagues, tied with the New York Yankees at this moment. Taking a look at what happened in Chicago, not that far away, the Chicago White Sox hosted the Red Sox in the Battle of the Sox. The Red Sox would beat the White Sox 16-7. to The White Sox would not get a chance to lead, um, and the Red Sox would put up 19 hits as a team. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Chicago White Sox saw the loss go to former American League Cy Young winner Dallas Keuchel. Keuchel allowed six earned runs off of seven hits in two innings pitched. He struck out four batters and walked two, and with this loss, Keuchel is two and five. In the White Sox batting lineup, their elite shortstop Tim Anderson went three for five with a run. Their right fielder Andrew Vaughn ended up going two for five with five RBIs and a run. He will go on to hit his fifth home run of the season. Um, their elite first baseman and former American League MVP, Jose Abreu, went two for four with a run. And then their center fielder in this matchup, Adam Engel, ended up going two for four with two runs. On the winning end of this matchup, the Boston Red Sox will see the start go to Michael Waka. Waka allowed five earned runs off of seven hits in the 4.1 innings he pitched as he struck out two. The win would end up going to the Red Sox first relief pitcher, John Schreiber. Schreiber allowed no earned runs and no hits as he would finish off the fifth and pitch the entire six. He pitched 1.2 innings, picking up two strikeouts. With this win, he's now 2-0. In the Red Sox batting lineup, their elite third baseman, Rafael Devers, went two for five with three runs. Their elite designated hitter, J.D. Martinez, went three for five with three runs. Um, their elite second baseman, Trevor Story, would go two for four with four RBIs and two runs as he had his ninth home run of the season. Their left fielder, Alex Verdugo, would go four for six with three RBIs and two runs. Their catcher, Christian Vasquez, ended up going three for five with two RBIs and a run. With this win, the Boston Red Sox are 21-23. and 23. That is the fourth best record in the American League East as they now sit 10 and a half games behind their, their arch nemesis, New York Yankees. They've now won eight of their last 10 games, um, and that is where they're sitting at the moment. With this loss, the Chicago White Sox are 22 and 22. That is the second best record in the American League Central as they sit four and a half games behind the division leading Minnesota Twins. The White Sox have lost five of their last 10 games. Taking a look at what happened in Anaheim, the Los Angeles Angels hosted the Toronto Blue Jays from up north. The Blue Jays would end up beating the Angels 6-3 to as the Angels really never got a chance to take a lead anyway, thanks to the Blue Jays' three-run third inning. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Angels saw the loss go to their elite starting pitcher in the reigning American League MVP, Shohei Otani. He would allow five earned runs off of six hits and six innings pitched. He would strike out 10 batters and walk one. With this loss, Otani is 3-3. Three and three. In the Angels batting lineup, their second baseman, Luis Renifo, would end up going 2-4 for four with an RBI. Their catcher, Max Stassi, went 2-4. for four. Their left fielder, Brandon Marsh, would end up going 2-4 for four with an RBI and a run. On the winning end of this matchup, the Blue Jays saw the win go to their elite starting pitcher out of Korea, Hyunjin Ryu. He would allow two earned runs off of six hits and five innings pitches. He would strike out a batter and even walk one. With this win, he's 2-0. In the Blue Jays batting lineup, their center fielder George Springer went two for four with an RBI and two runs. He had his ninth home run of the season. Their elite designated hitter, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., would go one for four with an RBI and a run as he had his ninth home run of the year. Their elite shortstop, Bo Bichette, went two for four with two RBIs. With this win, the Toronto Blue Jays are 24 and 20. That is the third best record in the American League East. They sit seven and a half games behind the division leading and American League leading New York Yankees. The Blue Jays have won their last two games and they've won six of their last 10. With this loss, the Los Angeles Angels are 27 and 19. That is the second best record in the American League West. They sit two and a half games behind the division leading Houston Astros. They've now lost their last two games. They've lost six of their last 10 at this moment. That's where they sit. They hold the fifth best record in the American League at this moment. Taking a look at what happened in Phoenix, the Arizona Diamondbacks hosted the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Dodgers would go on to beat the Diamondbacks 4-1 to one, as they would go on to score the first 10 runs of this game before the Diamondbacks scored their lone run in the sixth. On the and Before I get into that, the Dodgers put up 24 hits as a team. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Arizona Diamondbacks would see the loss go to their starting pitcher, Humberto Castellanos. Castellanos allowed six earned runs off of 10 hits in the four innings he pitched. 
he would strike out a batter and even walk one. With this loss, he's now 3-2. and two. In the Diamondbacks batting lineup, their designated hitter, Christian Walker, ended up going 2-3 for three with an RBI and a run. The, the Diamondbacks' lone run was Christian Walker's 12th home run of the season. On the winning end of this matchup, the Los Angeles Dodgers saw the start go to Mitch White. He pitched the first four innings of this game, allowing no earned runs and only two hits. He struck out two batters and even walked two. The win would go to the Dodgers' first relief pitcher, Justin Bruil. He would allow no earned runs off of two hits in the fifth inning, As he, and with this win, he's now 1-1. One and one. In the Dodgers batting lineup, their elite right fielder Mookie Betts would end up going three for three with three runs. Their elite uh, first baseman and former National League MVP Freddie Freeman would end up going four for five with five RBIs and three runs. He would go on to hit his 17th and 18th doubles of the season as well as his fourth home run of the year. Their elite shortstop Trey Turner and the former National League batting champ went two for four with an RBI and a run. Um, Their Catcher Will Smith went two for five with two RBIs and a run. Their designated hitter in this matchup, Edwin Rios, ended up going three for six with a run. Their third baseman, Justin Turner, went two for six with two runs. Their elite center fielder, Cody Bellinger, went three for six with three RBIs and a run. Their left fielder, Chris Taylor, went three for six with three RBIs and two runs. Chris Taylor hit his fifth home run of the season yesterday. And their their second baseman, I mean, Gavin Lux, went two for five. With this win, the Los Angeles Dodgers are 30 and 14. That is the best record in the National League West. That is the best record in the National League as well. The only team with a better record than the Dodgers in the majors is the New York Yankees right now. Um, The Dodgers sit two games ahead of the second place San Diego Padres within their own division. Vision. They are now they've now won eight of their last 10 games with this loss. The Arizona Diamondbacks are 23 and 23. That is the fourth best record in the National League West. They sit eight games behind the division leading Dodgers as they've lost five of their last 10. And last but not least, jumping up to the Bay Area, the Oakland Athletics hosted the Texas Rangers. The Rangers would end up beating the Athletics four to one. The score was tied at one until the ninth inning. Um, and then the I guess the Rangers would break the tie off of an RBI double from Odolis Garcia, but then Nathaniel Lowe's two-run home run would put the cherry on top and give them the 4-1 to one win they needed for win number 23 of the year, as these two teams are battling for the third best record in their division. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Oakland Athletics saw the start go to Frankie Montas. Montas allowed one run off of three hits and seven innings pitched. He would strike out 11 and he would walk two. Um, The loss would end up going to the A's uh, setup relief pitcher, Lou Trevino. He would allow two earned runs off of two hits as he started the ninth but did not finish it. Um, With this loss, he's one and three. In the Athletics batting lineup, their left fielder, Chad Pinder, would go two for four with a run. Um, And on the winning end of this matchup, the Texas Rangers would see the start go to Martin Perez. Perez would allow one earned run off of four hits in seven innings pitched. He would strike out six batters and then walk two. Um, The win would end up going to the Rangers' first relief pitcher, Matt Bush. He would allow no earned runs and only one hit in the eighth inning. Um, With this win, he's now 2-1. And And then the save would end up going to the Rangers' closer, Joe Barlow. With his loss, uh, or I guess he would would pick up his eighth save of the season in the ninth inning as he allowed no earned runs and no hits in the ninth. He did walk a batter, however. Um, In the Rangers' batting lineup, their right fielder, Cole Calhoun, went 2-4 for with a run. And their center fielder, Adolis Garcia, went two for four with an RBI and a run. With this win, the Rangers are 20 and 23. That is the third best record in the American League West, as they are now officially the ninth team in the American League to cross the 21 threshold. They have they are now sitting eight games behind the division leading Houston Astros. They've won their last two games and they've won six of their last 10. With his loss, the Oakland Athletics are 19 and 28, still yet to cross the 20 win threshold. Um, they are sitting 11 games behind the division leading Houston Astros. They've lost six of their last 10. 
So that's where these teams are sitting as we go into today's matchups. Um, of course, today is Friday. Taking a look at what is going on, starting off at the very top at 640 in Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. The Reds, who hold the worst record in the MLB, are going to host the San Francisco Giants. Carlos Rodon is going to start for the Giants as he enters his matchup with a 4-3 and record, holding a 343 ERA. At 745 on ESPN+, Plus, the Washington Nationals are set to host the Colorado Rockies and Nationals Park as the Nationals hold the and the Rockies each hold the worst record in their respective divisions at this moment. Taking a look at what happens, what's going on at 710, the Boston Red Sox are set to host the Orioles as the Red Sox have probably caught a bit of momentum. At the same time at 710 in Comerica Park, the Detroit Tigers are set to host the Cleveland Guardians. The Guardians are going to be led out by their elite starting pitcher Shane Bieber. Bieber is going to take the mound, holding a 1-3 record and a 3.55 ERA. At 7-10, the team that holds the best record in baseball, the New York Yankees, are going to go to Tampa Bay to face off against the Rays and Tropicana Field, as these two teams hold the best two records in the, Na- or in the AL East. The Yankees are going to be led up by Jamison Tyone. He enters his matchup with a 4-1 record, holding a 2.95 ERA. At 7-10 in City Field, the New York Mets, the holders of the best record in the National League East, are set to host the Phillies, who are tied for the second best record in that division. The Mets are going to be led up by Carlos Carrasco. Carrasco holds a 4-1 and record and a 3.50 ERA. At 7-20 in Truist Park, the defending World Series champs Atlanta Braves are set to host the Miami Marlins. At 8-10 on Target Field, the Minnesota Twins are set to host the Kansas City Royals. The Royals are going to be led out by Brad Keller. Keller enters this matchup in, or I guess, in Minneapolis, holding a 1-4 record and a 3-20 ERA. And then at 8-15, the St. Louis Cardinals, right now the runners-up of the National League Central, are set to host the Milwaukee Brewers as the Brewers are being led out by Brandon Woodruff. At 9.38 on Apple TV Plus in Angel Stadium, the Los Angeles Angels are set to host the Toronto Blue Jays. The Blue Jays are going to be led out by Alec Manoa. He enters his matchup holding a 5-1 record and a 162 ERA. At 9.40 in T-Mobile Park in Seattle, the Seattle Mariners are set to host the division-leading Houston Astros. Astros are going to be led out by their goaded starting pitcher, Justin Verlander. Verlander enters his matchup holding a 6-1 record and a 122 ERA. At 9.40 at Chase Field, the Arizona Diamondbacks are set to host the LA Dodgers. At 9.40 in Petco Park, the uh, current NL West runners-up, San Diego Padres, are set to host the Pittsburgh Pirates. And then at 9.40, the Oakland Athletics are set to host the Texas Rangers. And then, of course, looking out to what's going on with soccer, the Champions League final will be tomorrow, as I will do a preview for that. But with that said, I do want to thank the NBA, NHL, MLB, and FIFA sites for giving me all the figures that I need. I am going to follow this up with an episode for the players that were named to the All-NBA teams as those players, of course, should be very proud of the accomplishments that they've undergone up until now. And of course, with that said, I do want to apologize for the names that I butchered as I do plan on getting them. uh, I do plan on getting better with them over time. And of course, to finish it off, I want to thank everyone once again for listening to this piece. I do a ball as well. And once all of today's exhibitions and matchups are done, I'm going to come back tomorrow on Saturday, May 28th for another episode. So until then, thanks for listening to my piece and peace out. I'll catch you tomorrow.